Am I the antagonist for not rearranging my plans due to a miscommunication? So I got my husband tickets for a football match for his birthday. The match is about one hour away from my hometown, five hours from where we live. Now instead of getting a hotel and arranging for my two-year-old to have a sleepover with my mother-in-law, my husband suggested that we stay with some of my family and spend an extended weekend there. My dad lives next to a train station, so I asked him if he would be up for looking after our two-year-old during the match. He has done it a few times before when we've both traveled down for work. For context, my parents are separated and my mom has recently had an operation and isn't well enough to look after my two-year-old for extended periods of time. So I asked my nan if we could stay at hers for a few nights and let my mom know we were coming down and if she wanted to do anything. I also asked if there was anything of my siblings that she wanted me to bring up as they now live in the same city as me and my husband. Now, according to my mom, we had arranged for her to look after my son while we go to a work meeting. I do not recall discussing anything with her about looking after my two-year-old, but I do appreciate that she may have interpreted us coming down and assumed I needed childcare because I had mentioned previously that I got my husband football tickets for his birthday that weekend. She's now called around several members of our family about how I've abused her. I've offered to discuss further and I was already planning on taking her to one of her favorite gardens while we were down, so would still be spending more time with her than my dad overall. But she's declined to speak with me, saying I have treated her like shit and asked my nan to not let me stay over. If I am staying with her side of the family, I shouldn't be seeing my dad at all. My dad doesn't have a spare room so we would need to pay for a hotel camp outside instead. I am happy to get a hotel for one night, which is all I can afford. But I don't want to cancel seeing my dad and not let him spend time with his grandson, especially as the last time I visited him was for his birthday and I had to cut the time short as my mom had insisted I spend the time with her instead. It sounds like there was miscommunication in the planning, leading to hurt feelings on your mom's end. While it's tricky to navigate family dynamics, prioritizing open communication and finding a fair compromise could help resolve the situation and ensure everyone feels valued. Am I the antagonist for giving an animal away after promising it to someone else? I'm going to be a bit vague on some details that might give my identity away. I raise reptiles and amphibians and sell them, but quite often I also do dealings with Zeus. I've sent my animals to zoos all over the United States. I ended up with a pretty rare animal a few months ago. An acquaintance that I'd had a few good conversations with over the last few years messaged me and told me that they wanted the animal for their private collection. I told them I'd let them know if I planned on selling, but I wasn't sure. Ultimately though, I did tell them that if I was going to sell her, I'd let them know before anyone else. At some point we corresponded again, and I told them I was ready to sell. I didn't get a response back from them, or so I thought. Turns out, I missed the message completely and thought they ghosted me. I didn't reach out again. I didn't want to be pushy. I waited a few months for a response not knowing I had one in my inbox, and then got an offer with a very big zoo that wanted the animal. I drove her out and delivered her, only to get home and realize a few weeks later that, whoops, I had actually been the one to ghost the acquaintance. I reached out, apologized, and offered them their choice of any of my other animals that I had for sale. I also told them that I would be getting a few more animals, very similar to the one they'd wanted. For a while, they continued to talk to me as if they weren't too upset. Then one day I was talking to them about some animals that I was breeding, and they blew up. They told me that they were very upset that I had given their animal away after promising it to them. I tried apologizing again, but they told me that I should never ask them for anything. Ever. I should never speak to them again. And then they blocked me on all social media. It's left me wondering if I'm the asshole. It was a mistake, and it was definitely my fault for not reaching out again after I thought I was ghosted. But does that make me the asshole or just an idiot? Am I the asshole for giving away the animal to a zoo instead of the person I originally promised it to? You're not the asshole for unintentionally overlooking the acquaintance's message, as mistakes happen, and it's clear you had good intentions from the start. However, communication is key in such situations, so it might have been better to double-check before proceeding with the zoo offer to avoid misunderstandings. Would I be the antagonist for yelling at my family member? I, 18 years old female, have grown up with my grandmother's constant belittling and managed to deal with it for all of my life. She has always said I'm a gifted child and expected good things from me. She has called me doctor, insert my last name here, my entire life and set a lot of pressure upon me. She is very selective with which grandchildren she loves, and I have always been lucky enough to make the cut. This affords me better Christmas presents but also drunk and passive-aggressive texts. I'm a junior in high school and am in the process of looking at colleges. Against my grandmother's wishes, I want to go to school for early childhood education instead of something in the sciences. When I was at her house last, I told her about this. She asked me if I thought that was actually something I'd be good at and implied I wouldn't. I had been working in childcare almost all of my teenage life and I pride myself on my ability to make children feel safe and loved. Throughout the entire conversation she made me feel small inside and like I would have no success in that field. This is what I've been dealing with for a while and was able to handle it. However, she soon started discussing how I could cure diseases if I put my mind to it. She referenced my Grammy. 
whom I loved very dearly and died semi-recently from cancer, and very heavily implied that I could save people like her. It was awful because I felt like a terrible person for not becoming a doctor and saving lives. I ended up leaving the kitchen, but later that day at the breakfast table she cornered me in another discussion. She talked about how I would be abandoning my family if I went to a college that was far away, and I had a duty to them. My family is incredibly important to me, but I've always longed for the feeling of independence. I tried to explain this to my grandmother, but she said we all want that. It's just not realistic. You have people here who need you. Keep in mind I don't even live with my family at this stage and instead attend a boarding school so. I sat through the entire lecture and held my tongue. When it was over, I gave her a quick hug and my dad and I left. I cried on the way home. I told my mother what happened and she recounted a similar experience that happened a week or two prior. I recently had a mental health related incident and my grandmother insinuated my mother wasn't doing enough to support me. This absolutely broke me inside because my mother has always done her best for me. I've decided I don't want anything to do with my grandmother anymore. I won't ask to see her and I won't reply to her passive-aggressive text messages, but eventually I will need to visit her, and when she comes after me, my mother, or anyone else in my family again, I will speak up and call her out. Your grandmother's expectations and comments may stem from a place of wanting the best for you, but it's important to remember that your career path and choices are yours to make. Setting boundaries and asserting yourself in a respectful manner can be a healthy way to navigate these conversations and ensure your well-being. Stand firm in your decisions and don't let anyone dim your light. Pursuing what brings you fulfillment is key to your own happiness and success. Am I the antagonist for telling my stepsister that I won't attend her baby shower and that I won't change my mind just because she keeps asking or sending invites? I, 26 years old female, have a stepsister, 18 years old female, I have not seen in many, many years. She was so young when I last saw her. My relationship with my mom, her stepmom, was never a good one. She was never a good parent to me and when she decided to get married and settle down while also not attempting to be a good mom to me, I made the decision to fight hard to get my dad to win custody of me, which he did when I was 13 years old. My mom was supposed to go to therapy and classes before the courts attempted to try reunification therapy for us. But she never took those steps so we never did the therapy together and won't. I have zero desire to be part of her life. I had a relationship with her parents and siblings, though not a close one. I was included by them though and would see my mom from a distance for a few years at occasional family gatherings. My stepsister would be there also and over time she became far closer to my maternal side than I was. My reason for not being very close to my maternal side is they would encourage me to give mom a chance and they would try and talk me into taking on the role of big sister for her stepdaughter because they knew my mom had zero desire to have any children at all and would not be having more and apparently her stepdaughter struggled with not having siblings so they wanted me to fill that gap for her. I wasn't interested then and I'm not today. I don't hate the girl but simply put, we are not family, and I really had little to do with anyone from my mom's side in a good four years since COVID. I received a digital invite to the baby shower three weeks ago and I RSVP'd no.a. This was followed by another one and followed by a message from my stepsister saying she wanted her baby's aunt to be there and it followed another message begging me to change my mind, and then another invitation that she personalized to ask me to be there, and she told me not to bring a gift, just me, because I would be the real gift. Just me, because I would be the real gift. I told her I was not interested again, and then I blocked her. But she followed me to another platform, and then she begged and pleaded with me to change my mind. She said it wasn't too late for us to be sisters and for me to be her baby's aunt. I told her I won't attend her baby shower, and I won't change my mind just because she keeps asking or sending invites. She told me she doesn't understand why I hate her and this interaction prompted contact from my maternal grandparents and they told me I shouldn't have been so cruel and if I really had to let her down, I should have made it way softer. Am I the asshole? You're not the asshole for setting boundaries with your stepsister and choosing not to attend her baby shower, especially if you have little desire to be part of her life. It's important to prioritize your own well-being and comfort in situations like these, even if others may not fully understand your perspective. Am I the antagonist for telling my friend I don't like her boyfriend? This actually happened about a year ago at this point but it's bugged me ever since and spiked up as of recent. I was 15 at the time, friend A was 16, friend B had just turned 17. Friend B was moving away after the end of the school year so we were trying to spend as much time with her as we could. Friend A however was working two jobs on top of an advanced placement art class and going into her senior year. We and myself and friend Biju tried to be supportive of her busy schedule and understood that even when she had time to hang out, she was exhausted. It seemed however friend A didn't mind hanging out with her boyfriend at any time of the day or missing events or etc instead of friend B and me. Friend A's boyfriend was also a total douche. He wasn't just rude or disrespectful. Some of his political beliefs were ridiculous. He was a neo-Nazi for example, crazy I know and was very heavily into his beliefs. For a while we thought it was just a joke, regardless if it was inappropriate, we figured he just had a very messed up sense of humor. 
Not only that, he seemed to actively hate friend B and me, making snarky comments, being rude and disrespectful for absolutely no reason, shitting on our names, and almost manipulating friend A into hating us. The finally breaking point was when he continued to make comments on friend B's ethnic food saying it smelled disgusting, looked atrocious, etc. This made friend B pretty uncomfortable, and she started to not eat because of it and sit in the library. After a while I went to sit with her and we discussed his behavior and how it made us both uncomfortable. Friend A was wondering why we were acting upset and being distant, and we told her that we didn't like her boyfriend, that he made us uncomfortable, was disrespectful, and that we couldn't stand to be around him because of that. He made excuses that he was schizophrenic, and his mood shifted a lot. Friend A got really mad at us, saying he was joking around, and regardless it still made us uncomfortable that he would make those jokes. For example about the jokes, they would be racist, sexist, he would make fun of special education kids in his class and gossip about them UD. He also claimed he could make racist jokes because he was black. We started arguing and it led to us cutting contact completely. Fast forward 5 months, I reached out to friend AO. Friend B had already moved and I was keeping contact with her the best I could and still am. Friend A seemed to be okay with becoming friends again, only to text me basically saying she felt she would be disrespecting herself by letting me back into her life. Needless to say, I was furious and didn't attempt to reach out anymore. Fast forward again 4 months and she has reached out to friend B with a simple, hey and me and friend B discussed this wondering if we would even want to be friends again with her after all the unnecessary drama. For context, friend A is still with her boyfriend. Am I the asshole? It sounds like you and friend B were trying to communicate your discomfort in a respectful way, and it's understandable that you wouldn't want to be around someone who exhibits such disrespectful behavior. It's important to prioritize your own well-being and boundaries in any friendship, so it might be best to reassess if being friends with friend A is a healthy choice for you both. Am I the antagonist for getting trespassed from a hospital? I have a few chronic illnesses that affect my joints. My joints are very easy to dislocate especially when I have seizures, and I need to go to the hospital for it to be fixed. A lot of doctors don't know about my condition or how to treat it, so they often ask what other doctors have done to help before. Last night this happened. When the doctor came in an hour after being there, he attempted to pronounce the name of my syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and got it horribly wrong. He then asked how other doctors treated this same injury, and I told him. He then told me he's not going to do that, and the only thing he's willing to do is splint my injury in the place it was. I told him multiple doctors, including my orthopedist, have told me not to do that because it will just cause more issues. I refused to have it splinted, and he immediately said, well, I'm not giving you drugs so that's your only option. I was upset that he thought I was drug seeking, and I raised my voice and told him I didn't want or need drugs, and I would just like to be discharged. He angrily took his gloves off, and he and the two nurses in there just walked away without saying anything. I walked out into the hallway close to the nurse's station where I admit I raised my voice and asked, So since I'm refusing treatment, can I be discharged? A nurse walked up to me, close enough that I could feel her breath, and said, You need to just leave right now, I'm getting security and calling the cops. I told her that was fine, and the security guy came and stood by me, and she said if I wasn't going to leave I had to go back to my room to wait for my discharge paperwork, and said it was a way to be in the- I was upset and told her that actually, according to HIPAA regulations, it was in no way illegal for a patient to be in the hallways, and she just stuttered, and I walked back to my room. Another nurse was standing near us, rolled her eyes and scoffed, and I said, don't roll your eyes at me, and she walked away. I stood in the doorway of my room waiting for my paperwork like I was told, and the cops showed up. One came and talked to me to get my side of the story. He was actually really nice and calm, and after a while, he asked if I'd be okay to go to my car to wait for my paperwork, and I was fine with that. We went outside to wait, and he told me that this hospital does this anytime anyone gets upset. He told me I'm going to be trespassed, and I was fine with that. The other cop came out with my paperwork and said, I wouldn't even bring my dog here, as he handed it to me. Before I got sick, I used to work in healthcare and had my fair share of angry patients, but unless threats were made or it became physical, we never called the cops or had people trespassed. I admit I was upset and raised my voice and argued with staff. I even admitted it to the cops. Am I the asshole for getting mad and arguing with hospital staff? It sounds like you were advocating for yourself and trying to communicate your needs in a challenging situation which is important when dealing with medical professionals who may not understand your condition. However, raising your voice and arguing with hospital staff, while understandable given the circumstances, may not have been the most effective approach in this scenario. It's crucial to find a balance between standing up for yourself and maintaining respectful communication, even in frustrating situations. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.